Hi everyone, I hope you are all doing well. So today, um, it's just going to be a quick video update. I just want to tell you about uh, some really, really good news because um, some of the roses are starting to bud for the second flush. So right over here, I don't know if you can see this, there's a whole cane of William Morris roses that are currently blooming and there are a few more buds that are still yet to bloom. And I don't know if you can see, but there is a Japanese beetle that's on here. So just give me one sec. Let me just grab it and put it in a little container of soap water. So I wanted to tell you that this year, actually for the first year in many years, I can't even remember for how many, that we have very few Japanese beetles feeding on the roses. So because of that, I am able to see these in bloom um, during the second flush. Normally everything that comes out gets fully eaten before they even get to open up. So I'm just so happy to see these blooming beautifully. Um, I came out this morning and they were just really fresh looking now some of these are starting to fade because uh, the last couple weeks we've had so much rain especially uh, the heavy rain that we actually had last night so some of these yesterday were really fresh but today uh, you can kind of see that they're starting to uh, fade rather quickly but I still have some very beautiful looking uh, healthy buds right there so hopefully I don't get any more Japanese beetles in the next few days because that's going to be what's going to kill them so fingers crossed so these roses are just really really pretty and i think um at this time of the year i think they are just uh, absolutely gorgeous um, but one thing i do notice is that the second flushed blooms are a lot smaller than the um, william morris roses that i got in the first flush so i don't have too much experience with uh, roses and second flush because like i said um every time we get them they tend to be eaten so i don't remember seeing too many of them um so but i vaguely remember that this time there are a lot smaller than the blooms from the first flush but regardless i think they are just really gorgeous and i love them here is um, something else that I'm really loving at this time of the year. This is the blooms of the Firelight Tidbit. And I don't know what it is, but uh, perhaps it was because I didn't get to see them uh, last year at this time. So right now, when I'm looking at this side of the garden, my eyes are drawn to these Firelight Tidbit. I think they are probably going to win me over and um, you know become one of my new favorites I think I think they're just really really lo lovely um, and so pretty and I think the entire plant is just really gorgeous I love its strong stem and even though the um, blooms are compact and dense the panicles I mean are compact and dense the stems are holding them up and I think that's just something that's very rare in, um, you know, a full panicle uh, type of uh, hydrangea like this one. So I think, um, like I said, this is quickly um, gaining favors and making me feel like they are going to turn out to be my new favorite uh, sort of uh, dwarf size panicle hydrangeas. And I also cannot wait to see how the color changes um, into fall because last year they bloomed so late for me that I never got to see um, how the panicle or the florets uh, change color. So I'm very excited about that. And this container, I don't know if you can see it well, but uh, it's starting to look so pretty. Um, I love um, the quick fire fab in this container. I have one in the ground that's really floppy, which I don't know why, but this one is looking really gorgeous. And uh, believe it or not, all of these stems are actually new, except for the one um, that I have on this side. This was the original stem that I had in the spring and it grew and, you know two uh, panicles here but the rest of the entire plant are new branches that came up um, since the spring so I am really amazed at you know how strong these stems are here in this container was for some reason in the ground it's not doing as well so I don't know what it is but I'm really loving this uh, so far and like I said because uh, the 
branches are all new. So all of these panicles um, are just recently formed and they are starting to open. So they are a little bit behind the one that's in the ground, but in terms of the strength of the stem and the um, you know amount of panicles that are about to open, I'm really excited to see how this corner is going to transform in the next couple weeks. And another thing that I also want to address, I think some people have asked me about this before, is um, is the yellowing of the leaves in the um, hydrangea when they're blooming okay. So I don't know if you can see, but I have one in here. See that? That's um, yellow. And that's okay. It means that the leaves is just um, not getting enough uh, water. And the plant is actually perhaps still developing roots and it's unable to, you know, um, get the water to the entire plant and so at the plant um, you know instead of sacrificing a bloom which is happening all over it actually sacrifices some of the leaves so that it has enough water to provide for the entire plant keeping the um, you know panicles the florets all healthy and beautiful for us so hopefully um, I have helped um, you know, to clarify uh, this misconception about yelling in the leaves and, uh, and, and, and allow you to feel more confident about the plant. Because like I said, a few yelling of leaves um, at the time when the plant is forming blooms and blooming, it's actually okay. So I want to show you something else that um, you might notice that it is not healthy. Uh, for the plant to have. So if you look closely here, you'll see that I have some leaves on this branch that is starting to yellow on the outside and it's got some brown spots like that. You see that? That is actually a sign that the plant is not getting enough water. Okay. So for me, um, because I don't know if you remember, but this one is a self-watering container that I have. And normally I check this every, I would say, week to two weeks or so. And every time I water it, I give each of these containers about, I think, four to six liters um, of water, depending upon um, which container or which self-watering container I have. But this one I think typically gets about four liters. So I just try to push it now and it's feeling really, really light. So I am thinking it is not getting enough water and that's why the plant is starting to look like it's uh, dehydrated. So um, I'm just going to quickly stop the video here and uh, fill up the um, self-watering reservoir and come back and film it. So here it is looking all happy and uh, well, hopefully it will start to look more happy but uh, I'm also starting to notice that these calaracaras that I grew from seed they're a little uh, bit dried up as well so possibly they're not getting enough water and that's probably the reason why. So I don't know if you um, know but there is a little um, opening here that I actually and I just fill up the water uh, through there with the hose or, or with a can. But anyway, um, I have more foliage that are starting to look like that as well. So hopefully that's going to rectify uh, soon and the plant will be able to uh, do better in the next uh, few days or so. And here's a beautiful um, plant or container of calabracoas that I grew from seed. I just love this beautiful shade of pink. And I don't know if you um, noticed, but this one, because I planted it on seed, so it started blooming for me a little bit later than the calabracoas that I have in the hanging basket. So this one, I haven't cut them back yet. So the, normally I start cutting them back when I start to see some death growth um, um, from kind of below. So this one, is still doing well so I think I'm gonna hold back the cutting back but the ones in the hanging baskets I did cut them back in the previous video that you saw and they're actually thriving and doing so well right now and here's one of these uh, hanging baskets that I cut back in the previous video look how full um, they have gotten so all of them are starting to look so good and I think you know with that uh, refresh of uh, fresh potting mix or compost like what I've used and a little bit of slow release fertilizer it just give it so much new life and the plants are doing so much better because of that
And at midsummer, I think the most beautiful, you know, fluffy white panicles that you see on the lime lights are just absolutely stunning. And looking at the limelight uh, panicles right now, I don't know if you can see, but you can kind of see that the foliage on the limelight looks a bit flat. They're not rigid uh, like some of the other uh, foliage that you see here, like here. But some of these up here look like they're dehydrated. So um, normally that's a sign that it needs deep watering. So normally the way that I do is I take the hose right to the base of the plant and I soak the entire um, you know, pan, well, like the entire space around the limelight, and I, if if possible, um, I would I normally extend it as wide as the canopy. So, I soak the entire thing and I leave the water hose running on low for at least uh, 10, 15 minutes. So, and once I do that, all of the leaves of the foliage here would perk up and the plant will look much much better but anyway that's just sort of a sign that i look for um because in the last i would say in the last couple of weeks i haven't had to water the garden all that much so um you know when this happens that's when i know it needs a good soaking and also the boba panicles are actually looking gorgeous at this time as well i love the mix of the, you know the older panicles here i don't know if you noticed but there's a hint of pink on them and these are some of the fresh new panicles that have just recently bloomed so they are more in a sort of whitish with the hint of um you know greenish color but you can so tell that there's a little bit more pink in some of the older panicles there that are looking really pretty as well. And right behind these bobo blooms, I don't know if you can see, but I actually have a few blooms of the Shropshire Lad Roses blooming. I actually uh, wasn't sure that I was going to get to see them at this time of the year because of the Japanese beetles, but I've been just so lucky in the last uh, few days to have seen a few beautiful blooms on here, and I still have a few more that are blooming, so I'm really, really, really happy that I got to see them. And I don't know if you can see, but the um, buds on here looks really pretty as well. I love that sort of peachy um, pink color of the, um, you know, fresh buds there. I think that looks really pretty. And I'm also loving the contrast of this fresh, you know, chartreuse green um, bobo panicle against the uh, peachy pink of the roses buds as well. So pretty. And just now, while filming, I just noticed that there are a few of the rosemary um, roses that have uh, been broken. So there's one here, and there's another one here as well. I am so sad because these are beautiful blooms that are about to open. Oh, darn it. Okay, so um, maybe it could be squirrels or something. I'm not sure what it is, but... Maybe I think I think possibly squirrels. Squirrels tend to like to climb down the trellis and um, around um, the base of these plants. So anyway, I have to prune that back, and hopefully they will reflush and uh, form new blooms. But I still have a few more that are forming as well. So fingers crossed, I will see some more blooms this year. But as as we head around here, you can see this beautiful firelight. I love or I absolutely love this color uh, and this time of the year because of the firelight blooms that are turning be this beautiful gorgeous pink. I really really think that's there's nothing prettier and you can kind of see the beautiful contrast between the the light pink of the bobo and the deeper pink of the um, firelight and then even the lava lamp is starting to look really pretty as well. And this lava lamp, uh, Flare Hydrangea, is gorgeous. And I think it's one of the most stunning plants right now. And um, there are many panicles at the top here that haven't fully opened yet. But the ones that um, just recently opened, um, um, it's massive. I measured it uh, earlier today. And I think from here to the top here, it was about 14 inches. So it's really massive. And um, I looked at, I measured some of these older ones here. This is about, I think, 12 inches. So compared to this one, this massive panicle is 
big and I don't know what it is but I love these lace cap panicles for those of you that know me lace cap panicles are sort of almost I would also say that they're almost one of my most favorite um, and it's because they attract bees and butterflies to the garden so I think for me anything that attracts uh, bees and butterflies it's a win-win for me so I really love lace cap panicles uh, and um, loving the fact that the panicles have that sort of uh, you know two-tone color you got the deeper pink at the bottom and that ga gradual lighter pink and then the white the tip there I think that's just really gorgeous and I'm also loving this view with all of the um, contrast between all the beautiful uh, panicle hydrangeas between the firelight and then the lava lamp and then as you come around this way you'll see the beautiful blue jangles that are purple and pink and bloom and then on top of that you got the uh, bobo panicles that are starting to you know pink up a little bit a blush tint of blush pink and then you got the firelight more bobos and the beautiful limelight here as well isn't that gorgeous? I think that's just really one of the most beautiful thing in this garden at the, uh, this time in the evening. And right behind this bobo tree, you see that this is the Eglantine roses. And like I said, I'm also excited about this one as well because I actually have tons of buds on here. Um, and so I'm just really, really thrilled to be able to see them at this time of the year. Anyway, I can't express how happy I am to be able to see the roses in second flush um, blooming uh, on these. So, really excited. And right behind this firelight and the bobos that I have in front are the three Lightfear Angel roses. And I actually have tons of buds on them and I'm just so happy again. Um, but I do have a little infestation of some kind of caterpillar. Um, that's feeding on them but I'm looking and I'm seeing that this one's okay it seems like they left the blooms intact this one's okay but I'm looking at this one I don't know if you can see it but any bloom that I had on here is actually gone so I am hoping that whatever is eating the foliage right do you see that it's not eating the um, flower buds because I really don't actually want to spray these um, because I don't know I'm just hoping that the um, buds will be okay and they will start blooming but anyway I'm just so excited to be able to see or hoping that I will see all of the buds on here um, bloom for me very soon because the this is actually um, you know one of my favorite things in June when they do bloom so I'm really excited about that I've actually got a couple that's currently blooming right now here's a beautiful one is that pretty and again I think these um, blooms in the second flush are a little bit smaller than the one that I have in I had in the first flush as well but uh, can't wait to see them in full bloom so so pretty I'm also loving the uh, Charchou's green and that sort of combined effect of the white on the limelight panicles and this limelight as well. So pretty. And you can kind of see that this one too needs a little bit of deep soaking of uh, water, which I will do after I finish filming this video. And for those of you that are wondering why this one has more of a chartreuse green than the other limelight, well, this one actually, um, it's actually blooming a little bit behind compared to the other limelight. So the color on these panicles are um, more of a green right now. But there are some that uh, are fully white. And right behind these bobos, um, I have a little quick fire. Um, and you can kind of see the lace cap panicles there right behind compare they look different than the bobos right so they've turned on really beautiful pink as well I think that's really pretty um, and because they're not getting enough sunlight so they're not uh, blooming as early as the um, quick fire that I have in the front of the house 
and from this view i don't know if you can see but the panicles on this uh, bobo hydrangea um, were all broken from the storm that we had a few days ago um, we had that heavy wind and it actually toppled this whole container uh, over and it broke off all of these stems up here so i did cut them back just to kind of prevent it from further damage but i did manage to save two panicles on here that are starting to look so pretty look at that beautiful pink color on these i think that's really pretty i think it's loving this uh, container and loving this space as well and also you can kind of see um, the container um, i actually also forgot to um, you know fill up the kind of sub water container so the leaves are starting to burn a little bit as well um, so I did fill up the water here um, earlier as well so hopefully this will start to look nicer and uh, the bobo will be okay so that concludes today's video I want to say thank you so much for watching I hope to see you all next time take care everyone bye bye for now